Hello again, this is Doc Tony. You clap, I can clean up. And I also run the Crooked Spine Show podcast here with my good friend, Mel Austin. Hey, buddy. Hey, I've known this guy for how long? You're five, six years, ten years, oh, eight thousand years? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe about eight, eight or nine, eight, nine yeah. years. And I first met Mel. He was working full-time job and doing a little bit of the stuff here and there, kind of dabbling in comedy and, and, and getting his feet wet, per se. I went to his first show at, uh, back in, I think it was your first show, right? The one in Claremont Flappers. Oh wow! Yeah, that's like there you go. There's a look. That's been a while. Yeah. Okay. And he was phenomenal. Now he's branched yeah. off, not recently, but but more importantly, to help kids understanding even parents too the importance of laughing, the importance of the science behind it, the health behind it. How do you get kids to laugh? And going from a comedy place to a school to a senior home to an event, even businesses too for adults. This helps us stay healthy, people. That's why I recommend my, my favorite movie, obviously, is probably Corner, is Three, Three Amigos. That's my favorite movie because it's corny funny for me. Right. So how do you promote health that way? So now I'll take it over. Tell me your story. When you first started, what was going on? I'm going to start the show on the other, other pages, too, so go ahead. Well, I think what, what really uh, opened my eyes about the schools is that uh, I was asked to do a, uh, a school assembly for a high yes. school. And uh, and it was just jokes. And I'll be yeah. honest with you, I did not sleep the night before because awesome. my whole thought was, they're not going to get it. It's going to go over their head. You know, I'm an adult telling funny jokes that people, older people, would normally get. Exactly. Well, the experience was that they loved it. Like, it was what clean. Is this? It was hilarious, and that sent the light bulb off right there. <laughs> And so um, I created a team called the Clean Comedy Team. And there what we go. do is we go into schools, whether it be elementary, uh, middle school, or even high schools, and we actually address anti-bullying or anti-drug. We even cover state testing and That's goal awesome. setting. And so the way that we have learned is that most of the other presenters out there are going in kind of sad very serious, don't bully, don't this. And we're like, we're comedians. You're How like, can we make not, it fun? You're almost bringing the kid in, hopefully you bring them up. Hopefully. They're crying, they're sad, the you know, they're showing videos of, you know, and I'm not trying to discredit it, but that's, being that's a the way to do it. Yeah, being a comedian, I wanted to come with a solution. And so instead of anti bullying, we call it leading with kindness. There you go. It's always about the solution. Instead of anti drug, we call it choose to be drug free. Different perspective mm -hmm. and being more, if you want to call it more action oriented. We shift their energy because we know <laughs> kids only have so much uh, of attention span. Yeah. And so after about eight minutes we shift into our juggler and now there's music, he's balancing chairs on his so chin. You're, he's, so you're almost uh, understanding kids psychology. Yes. Not just about the material trying to get across, but understand how to get it across to them. Yes. That's different than most comedy. Mm -hmm. Not only comedy, just how kids learn. Absolutely. So you're teaching them something that's valuable, life skills, in a way they can actually absorb it and understand it and then hopefully implement it in their normal life. Absolutely. That's After the juggler, and by the way, it's high energy. There's music playing. He's putting his body through tennis rackets. He's <laughs> juggling, glow in the dark, uh, bowling pins. Like they are just captivated. Wow. And we do that by design. Then I come out. I do more jokes. And then I'm kind of like the man on the street. By that time, we've already selected a teacher from that assembly oh, okay. to join us on stage as, with skits. So the skits wow. are revolved around making the right choices, being respectful, being responsible, and being safe. And so as they do the skit, which we still make fun, yeah. you know, uh, and have fun, the uh, I'm in the audience and I'm and I'll ask the kids which student did the right thing. So you're the you're the narrator per yes. se on the side going, hey, how do we? Which made the better choice? So you're actually having yes. them follow the story. Mm -hmm. Even adults come out from this. This is how adults learn also. To learn what you want them to learn. Absolutely. Phenomenal. Wow. Absolutely. Once we're done with that, then we have a magician close it out. Usually one from the Magic Castle. Awesome. And they're captivated. Yeah. And of course, all of our performances, and we have a DJ the whole time. So okay. he is bringing music in and out. He's making the <laughs> announcements. He's 
reminding them why we're there to be respectful, responsible, and safe. And, yeah. uh, and then at the end, you know, we just we say thank you and we bring in the next group. Wow. So that's, we've done over 100 schools now. Jeez. Yeah, we, I think we're about 105 schools we've done uh, in the last maybe four or five years. How and, long does uh, that scenario take place? How long does that take? It's 45 minutes, 40 minutes per okay. assembly. Okay, per assembly. assembly. And we leave that time because they have to transition out. Got it. And then the next. So you actually do classes in. or groups at back to back to back. Yeah, they're set right with the bell That's schedule. Awesome. That's awesome. Absolutely. So you're actually not going to hold, not a whole school, but probably most of the school based on being there the whole, the whole time. Absolutely. That's great. Mm -hmm. What's the feedback from principals and teachers of these programs? They absolutely love it because the kids are, so for example, some schools have their own uh, uh, words that they are using to okay. remind the kids to be safe or responsible, whatever it might be. Okay. And we can take that and uh, we incorporate it in our association. So that way they're still... It's matching what they've yeah. already been hearing from their teachers. Yeah, so it reinforces what their teachers are already saying. So, you know, th there could be a song yeah. that we'll infuse in there, and now we'll hear that the kids are still singing the songs a month later. <laughs> you know? It's like, can you please stop singing the song? Or yeah. The song? That's great. I think the biggest thing that <laughs> has been uh, rewarding is uh, the middle schools. Why? Because, first of all, they have a lot of... Uh, eh. Hormonal. Their bodies change. Attitude. They're metamorphosizing, as I say. But these kids have been on fire to where they. Okay, so let me yeah, back up. Yeah, yeah. Of course. This is we your partnered show. with the Fontana Police Department. Awesome. Now you mentioned that a couple weeks ago. Too. Yes. That's awesome. And so um, they got authorization for us to do six schools with them in the Etiwanda School District. Perfect. The kids were so excited. They went home, told their parents. Some of those parents were board members for Fontana. Oh, so they picked it up. And they're like, wait a minute. Why are you <laughs> doing this in that district when you should be doing it for us? Then the mayor got involved. Oh. She was upset too. Why are we not doing this in all of our schools? And it was like, well, who's going to pay for it? Yeah. So then they kind of figured oh. it all out. Well, they there, was, there was a need, they figured out how to pay for it. That's yes, they were just surprised that their own police department had partnered with us and was doing it in a district outside of the main district. So wow. that was a funny thing. But it was the kids that went home just really excited about so what they experienced. it came from the kids, not from the parents. Yes. Went up, went up the chain, per se. Yeah. Thanks, Floor, for watching the show. I see you. You're a great person. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of it is, is you're getting the... Now the show's been, if you want to call it popular, now the kids are going, hey, mom, dad, I want this. Parents are going like, well, why don't we have this? Right. Why don't we have this in this district, in this school, and over yes. here? And junior high kids, I taught junior high for a year, and I said, I'm never teaching again because of the torture I went through. <laughs> but a lot of it is, how, if you can connect with them, connect yes. with younger kids, older kids, even parents too, mm -hmm. and at a business setting, understand the benefit of that too. Absolutely. Have you branched off to adults too? As far as the anti-bullying? Or the, how do you transition that to a, an adult format? All right, so... I'm sorry, I'm pushing here. On the corporate side... Yeah, corporate side, exactly. You know, obviously, they don't say, I'm being bullied. Yeah, yeah that'd be But weird. what I do is I create a, a stress-free zone of where we can actually play. So, uh, for example, right at this moment, yes. I'm really pushing the holiday parties. Okay. 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 And what I do is I do research on the company. Okay. I find out. I even have a questionnaire to ask some specifics <laughs> about. Little recon then. Yeah, a little bit about some customers. Yeah. Some really unique employees. What? Really fun. You just questions. don't show up. You actually come in with yes. knowledge about everybody. And then I bring my DJ with me. What? And so I start off with laughter because again, What's it wrong lowers with that? the guard. It, it gave everybody breaks, everybody's breaks laughing. The ice. Yeah. And then we get right in the games. So we're doing. Family Feud style games, but the questions awesome. are revolved around them and their industry. Exactly. We're doing uh, musical chairs. We're doing, and uh, you might think, man, this is it's kind of childish. Oh. All adults want to be kids. Uh, we're playing hot potato with the music. Yeah. They're they're like yelling and they're having a great time, and all of that is stress reducing. And so, for adults, when it comes to that particular setting, yes. 
And that's my approach is to get them laughing and playing games. It's team building. It's it's yeah. uh, synergy. You know, all those good things are coming together. And, you know, people are like walking away with value. Like, wow, this is the best holiday party we've ever had. That's it wasn't awesome. just dinner and the DJ played music and everyone left. Yeah. It was engaged. You actually connected with your employees you may not even know in the last 11, 12 months. Yeah, to see the CEO come up and lead the whole group in the, uh, the 12 days of Christmas. And the CFO is flipping the charts back and forth and the audience is speeding up on purpose. It is hilarious but fun. And it just shows their, a relatedness. Yeah. That they normally don't probably get to see with each other. We all want to play. How do you, like you said, how do you relate everyone to that? And then from there, branch off to connecting and connecting, connecting. Mm -hmm. Make it more of a family atmosphere, not a boss employee type of that. Right. And I got to share, there was one no. that sticks out <laughs> to me. It's, oh, it was the best. It was a company uh, out of Corona. Uh, K2 Fabrications. The K2 Fabrications. That's, right, that's, that's what you said, right? Yes. So make sure they said that. Yes, okay. yes. And um, I can't remember the IT guy. Maybe his name was Dave. Okay. You know, Dave was very conservative. So yeah. we have this thing called the dance off. Oh. They don't know in it. it I it's no, they're not pre. pre I okay. call off raffle numbers, and yeah. they don't know what's about to happen. Well, these six people got up, and Dave was one of them. Okay. And I said, "All right, you guys gonna get your special prize, whatever the company bought them yeah, anyway." Yeah. Uh, but before you get it, you have to dance. Hit it! And then the DJ starts playing. Boom, this guy jumping it. Funky Cole Medina and Rick James and nice. man. And you see all these different people. Nancy from accounting, Dave from IT, you know, Josh from operations. Dancing. It is hilarious. And yeah. the audience, the, 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 the other employees are laughing and they're clapping for them. So anyway, uh, I shut the music down, and everybody's still laughing, and I'll say something funny, and I'll sit that person. Now we're down to four. Yeah. And then do the same thing, now we're down to three. Well, it got down to two, and Dave, Dave from IT. Yeah, the, the serious guy. He has his glasses on. He yanks his glasses off, pulls his shirt out of his pants, and like, bring it on! And they were, they went nuts. Like, whoa! Who is this guy? Dave is Mr. Hype came out. Yes. Wow. So fun yeah. things like that happen, and it's just amazing to me every single time I see it to see how adults really do want to play. And they and when you get that feeling, and because it's very successful, what what's the emotional change just to describe it that you see? What I notice is afterwards. Okay. Uh, what I notice is that the buzz in the room is way higher people are laughing the music's still playing you know they're hanging out i did a uh, i did a uh, similar thing for the professors out of university of laverne really professors yes oh yeah oh. that's what i was thinking on my own no well, how do you get a like, they, this is a test it, tested it was and it was amazing and they shared with me that there was a few people who normally at these meetings yeah. afterwards they kind of get a couple cookies and they go off to their room yeah these people were over doing the uh, Macarena they were laughing and they they were shocked like wow Justine or who yeah. you know Sarah never Sarah stays lies. yeah she's still here having a good time so that's what I see is that it just it loosens people up to actually be more social well, there's a neurological change in people's body where they open up, and they want to be part of that. They want to be. They want to be entertained. They want to be excited. Yes. We have endorphin, serotonin that we want to go. We want our body loves. It's it's a it's almost a drug. It is a hormone mm -hmm. where your body wants to feed it, but you need stimulation like that. Yes. To feed it to get them to come out mm -hmm. of their shell. Mm -hmm. And professor, you're thinking like introvert, books, books, books. Right. That's it. You know, that's all you're hoping for. But that's that's a good test for you. From the kid perspective, what what chemical change or what kind of emotional change do you see in the kids? Uh, Go back to the kids now. I would say um, really getting them to uh, embrace that they are a leader. Like oh, really so you're going push. from the inferior to the, yes. not inferior, but... Leading with okay. kindness. Got and it. the way that you lead with kindness is that you do the right thing. So, for example, the skits that we do where we involve a teacher, one of the things is you don't realize sometimes that you 
bully your teacher. Check this out. And then they look at the, and then we have uh, a teacher as a student. Okay. We have another one of our guys as another student. And then we have our other guy, Mike, comes out with a wig. And the kids oh. lose it. <laughs> and he's like, okay, class. And then they're oh, no. laughing. And he's like, don't hate. I know I'm beautiful. And then he'll say, who's our current president? And then our guy will be like, it's Donald Trump. You're fired. And the kids laugh. But the the good student, yeah. we tell them, you yeah. know, we train them ahead of time, just raise your hand. Yeah. And then he'll say, thank you for raising your hand. What's the answer? And then they'll say it. Yeah. And then I'm in the audience with the microphone. I'm like, now, which student did the right thing? Perfect. The one that just jumped out of their seat and yelled? Or the one that actually raised their hand. And of course, you know, they'll say, it's the one that raised their hand. And why is that important? Because you're respecting your teacher and you're respecting your other. Excellent. Let's there give a go. round of applause. There you By go. that time, we've shifted into the second wow. one, which okay. is usually uh, uh, a kid is uh, has a bloody nose. Okay. And he's trying to find, you know, the office. And he's wearing like a, a panda hat. So our guy is like laughing, oh, look at you, man. He said, oh, I never look. He said, why have you stopped, you know, sticking bamboo sticks in your, you know, making fun of them. And the kids are still laughing. Yeah, yeah. But then the other person, the teacher, is like, oh, are you okay? Can I help you? Let me take you to yeah. the office. Again, I'm like, which student did the right thing? There you go. Now they are able to see, is it the one that made fun of him? Or the one that actually wanted to help. And then, of course, they say. And then the last one is usually um, being safe. That's been, okay. Lately, has been the, safe the, 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 what they've been wanting out there. Oh, okay. We will adjust. But lately, has been being uh, respectful, responsible, and safe. And with safety, you know, our, our guys are uh, pretending that they're in the WWF. You know, and so they're like, oh, I'm Conor McGregor. And then they're like, hit me with the chair. And then our guy goes to pick up the chair. And then we have the other, the good student, yeah. the teacher say, no, wait a minute. Guys, that's dangerous. Why don't we do something else that's more fun, that's not going to get hurt. And again, I'm saying, which student did the right thing? The one that was going to go along with this yeah. and maybe get hurt? Or the one that said, hey, let's do something more safe. Yeah. And so that is how wow. we, we give them the the right solution versus telling them not to be exactly. bullies or not to do drugs. We, we give them, here's choices, do this. And when, they, and when the kids make the choices, there's a neurological component to that to where it now reinforces that behavior in the next situation. Next yes. situation. So now they're making the choice there, taking care of those versus what not to do. You're not giving them the right to choice to do, like you had said. Mm -hmm. At that point, now you're giving them things to do the right way. Absolutely. That's phenomenal. How do the kids respond to that? They absolutely love it. They want to come up and, and get autographs, or <laughs> they want to, you know, high five. Um, you well, know, they're seeing that as a, a good and respectful and pop thing to do, yes. not not the rarity. Right. And you're getting the emotional response to like, to, like the adults. So you get the serotonin endorphin release, so it becomes an emotional attachment to the right thing. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal. Absolutely. Wow. Thank you. Wow. It, it, but but you, how do you develop this? How did you... Well, the new thing right yeah. now has been coming up, unfortunately, is uh, suicide. Yeah, I'm going to talk on Thursday about suicide with a, with a psychologist. So, you know, we're, yeah. we're brainstorming on creating the same kind of format. And the way that we see this panning out is doing the right thing as leaders and paying attention there you go. to that friend that's quiet. Because, you know, kids are dealing with a lot. You know, parents might be going through divorce. Uh, you know, uh, there's an issue with finances. Whatever there is. The stress so is coming on to the kid, you, you maybe of, even directly. It, yeah, and the kid is kind of quiet and to themselves, which I think is the beginning of what could lead to. Yeah. And so what we want to do is we want to... Uh, raise the awareness to pay attention Good. to that friend instead of alienating them and saying that they're weird or they yeah. are always by themselves making it harder on them that way go spend time with them get them out of the house you know mm -hmm. like do those things so that you're more instead of ignoring it and letting it explode later why not address it and lead with kindness in some kind of, of course. Way. So we're still kind of working yeah. that out, but that's the next, I think that's the next thing that's really being uh, expected now is 
how do how can uh, teachers and schools support kids that are sad and and and, and prevent suicide and, and make it part of their their protocol not when things happen we're going to react to it right that's i think that's the issue and i'm gonna i'm doing my talk with Nareema murphy on thursday mm-hmm. she's a child therapist and and we're going to talk about okay what happened and how like you mentioned how do you prevent that how do we make the next how do we do our best because mm-hmm. you can't fr- uh, do everything to make that less of a risk yeah it's almost like yeah. you can't you can't there's a lot that needs to be done when you're dealing with an individual. Or, yeah. But when you can address the group, the village, the yeah. the tribe around them to yeah. be more aware, now, you know, I think that's more momentum. Yes. You know? Yeah. You, know you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. If I said yeah. to a kid, hey, are you okay? They may or may not share with me. Yeah. But if I got the rest of the kids involved to, like, want to be... Uh, supportive and encouraging. Now, their peers care, and there there's a normality of that that settles in in a, in a tribe, in an environment, in a school that it's okay to either reach out to your friend right. or reach to someone that you might think have the issue. Absolutely, and teachers can pick that up more too. Mm-hmm. Okay, how do I become more aware of my kids? Yeah, it's like the yeah. the kids won't really talk to us adults. No, never. But they will respond to their peers that's huge so we're trying to educate and empower the the, the ground up the, their peers yeah. to be aware of this thing so that it can be uh, addressed in different ways it, it's it's and it, uh, hopefully the show too will give you some some pointers how to do that because she's very good with with kids mm-hmm. and then to open up to uh to not only their parents but their kids too and even to her sure uh, how to make that more of a normality what to look for how to support each other, how to overall people to understand where it's coming from and, and how to communicate that. Absolutely. It's phenomenal. And, and what I like is that your your show evolves as the community needs you. Yes. Huge. What range do you work with right now? Is it more Inland Empire? Is it some greater LA area? Uh, it's mostly Inland Empire. Okay. Uh, we're starting to uh, drip a little into Orange County, a little bit into LA. Um, and, and, you know, we're not opposed to that yeah. uh, because we want to touch as many. I mean, the whole uh, movement behind this company is to inspire the world with laughter. It's, and it's, it's something that's been around for since we've been humans, I think. Yes. And how can we, how do we get away from that and now get us back in there? Well, the way it got away is because comedy has normally been dirty. Yeah. I don't want to say it, but that's. That's been that, the problem. When you look at YouTube and look at comedians, mm-hmm. the ones that have the most viewed are the ones that are using profanity. Absolutely. So there's this framework that everyone kind of puts it in uh, when it comes to looking at comedy. But one of my missions is to change the world of comedy. And, and your, your clean comedy show, yes. is that twice a month, once a month? <laughs> it varies. Okay. Uh, okay. It's normally once a month. But because of, we've been helping so many nonprofit yes. organizations, uh, like August, we had four shows back to back. Oh gosh, four Fridays in a row. And that's at Ontario. Ontario. Oh, okay. uh, it's at the uh, Dave and Buster's. Dave and Bu- they, okay. They they have a separate showroom. People oh, always okay. say, "I didn't know that." Oh, Dave and Buster's. How are you doing a show there? There's a separate showroom. It holds about 180 people. What? I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Perfect little place. Okay. And so they sell tickets. Nice. And the night of the show, I reserve seats for those people for you know whether they did fifty or a hundred or a hundred and fifty. Yeah. And they come, and I I bring in a team of comedians. Phenomenal. Uh, and I have the DJ, and so yeah, we've been running this show now for about four and a half years. Wow. And um, we've had organizations come back two, three different times because. They made great money, but at the same time, they had such a great time because yeah. it's a family-friendly event. Yes. You know, to see adults laughing with their teenagers at the same table Yes, is mind-blowing to me to see that families can come together. Wow. You know how it is trying to connect with your oh, teenagers. Gosh, yeah. I'm just trying to make sure they're 
to run off. Or if right. they do, like, uh, that might not be a bad thing to run off. I'm not sure. Right, right, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but how do you, and that's the thing. You're getting people to, and maybe employee, uh, boss, maybe teacher, student, maybe parent, child, to connect. Yes. And be on the same page of what's, what are good values, how to have fun, and how to do it in a clean manner. Yes. Absolutely. Which, it, it takes work. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of work. You can't go to the normal comedy show and expect that. Right. Ever. Well, the work that you're mentioning is the educating people that it's okay. Yes. It's safe. It's okay. You, don't worry. You know, it may not like, be it may not be the average, but it, but you got to give them that disclosure. Hey, it's going to be clean. Yes. That's why I named the show Squeaky Clean Comedy. If you, if you don't understand that. And I still that. have to explain it, though, because yeah. they want to be sure. They want to make, yeah. you know. They like, want to make sure what you're yeah. saying is what you're going to do. Yes. Now, the show was previously at the Improv. I bet right across corner, yeah. Yeah. Or and the Pro, yeah. some people at work, oh, I've been to the Improv before. But once I went to Dave & Buster's, it was a, a family-friendly yeah. place yeah. already. Uh, that's when things really start to take off. That's awesome. People got it, especially when they saw it was a separate showroom and they could actually enjoy themselves. And they, and I didn't even know there was a showroom that it almost makes it a whole new venue for people to go. Absolutely, that's awesome. Absolutely, that's good. Good. Yeah. And for your first show too, what's your next step with your, with your your show with with your overall company business? Well, what's your next step. My next step when it comes to that particular show. I would like to have it be uh, broadcast. Yes. Because I feel like there's people around the world that need this laughter as well. And just and to be able to it. tune in yeah. uh, and watch it would I that would be amazing. Have you started putting some of your shows that'd be approved to put them online? People I can. See? I have the flexibility. Okay. To, the challenge is. I'm doing everything. It's it's yeah. You only have so many hours in that. I would rather have someone who's smart enough and fast Organized enough. Organized the right way. That knows this. Yeah. Ins and outs. You know, at an affordable cost. Yes. Uh, I also see the benefit of having uh, potential sponsors step in. That yes. businesses that complement, like cleaning uh, companies or cleaning supplies or. Carpet cleaning companies because squeaky clean. Of course. You feel me? Yeah. Even dentists, I feel like they're cleaning. Like, there's different, but, you know, taking the time. That's a whole different no business. Excuse. But it is. It's how do you run your business, but also get people to see it and see yes. it and see it. And, and it's been, see, this, this show will take, took us about, I don't even know how long it's been, probably about 20, 20, 25 minutes or so. To upload it and download will take another hour and a half to right exactly to caption or let alone it editing out. if you need to if, if the show I mean sometimes the show may even work right to call it back go do it again right exactly so it's it's but doing it more and more of it and spending the time doing that the long benefit is for someone to contact Mel and be his advocate to get things started sure is how do you as a marketing company per se become part of this to help people around the world see this product. Putting your name on it too. Yes. Hey, I helped this. I helped these guys. It's it, and I don't see it as a business. It's more as a vocation, right? A purpose to help kids and their parents connect. Absolutely, it's huge. Mm-hmm. I don't understand how people wouldn't see that. Sure. And what you're doing too, from the adult perspective, is it more of the holiday shows, more of the more in between shows? What else have you done besides the holiday shows? Well, uh, you know, I do a lot of corporate training. Okay. What is corporate training involved? So it's kind of similar to the holiday, okay. with you know, but. We actually address real issues, so I'll find out what their top three concerns yeah, are from HR, and I'll do research. And so, it the first part is usually uh, a interactive workshop. Okay. So I'll have, for example, a group a group in different tables, and they'll have subjects. And so the beauty of that is that you have seasoned and younger, newer people coming together discussing. So I'm not going in there like some guru, no. I, they are discussing things that are, and of course I'm there to guide, yeah. there's music playing, so it's a different environment. You, you keep it light. Percent. Yes. You break the ice down. Yes, and they brainstorm, and then I have them express it and share it amongst each other, and they clap, and, and so it's just a different way to get the people talking That's about awesome. things that they're already brilliant at. Yeah. You know, it's not another... 
seminar you're sitting there you know oh yeah I know this you know it's different you get to contribute you're part of the part of the team part of the group and, and Steve in cubicle 45 in the West End who's been there for 20 years he can talk to the newbie who's been there for six months right um, Carl I'm gonna give him Carl for another name mm -hmm. and they actually see each other they go hey I see you in the coffee room right we're on different wavelengths hey I got I talked to you so even after the corporate training they can still grow on that Absolutely, and, and benefit, Carl and benefit. Yeah, Carl. can contribute too. Exactly, because he knows all the bells and whistles and the the the, the all internet the and stuff. Yeah. Yes, so so they get to benefit it. by being together and having that kind of a, a, a arena to 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 like uh, share information with. And then now now Steve knows that Carl does that. Hey, Steve or Carl. I got this pro the program in there. I don't know what's going on with it. Right. Can you spend an hour with me? He goes, yeah. Sure. Not a problem. I'll take you to lunch, whatever. Since so you're seeing almost the benefit from this corporate training. Yes. Not even then, but maybe three, four months later, when things are doing well. Absolutely. Because they communicate now from a from a older, newer employee, mm -hmm. from even though at the same level. Sure. That's phenomenal. Wow. Yeah. And that's just at work. You know, there's church events. I do a lot of church events. You know, just, most churches obviously they they want to raise money yes and so the the main things that I address when I approach a church is number one laughter is great synergy amongst your your members why not get them to come together and really laugh yes. number two this is a great opportunity for you to fundraise towards one of your ministries Huge. you know you want to do the food ministry you want to do the children's ministry you need you know supplies you can do this show and the main thing, the number three thing, is that you know people who go to church, they've always wanted to bring their coworker or their neighbor yes. or their relative, and they never come. But if there's a comedy show, it's not even church. It's a comedy show, church. But it's, yes. but it's more of hey, you want to go to comedy show? I've had churches say that their next day service it was standing room only. Because those people came to the show the night before, had such a good time, got to see the church in a whole different light. Yes. And so that's an opportunity to actually witness for more people to see. You're being getting them in the door. You're getting them, okay, now now what's the ministry about? First, they've never shown up because of, before that, too. Mm -hmm. And what is your, just to give a little tidbit, what's your trailer of the church show? Uh, it's just... Uh, <laughs> I'm curious. It depends on what they want. Okay. A lot of times, uh, I'll bring uh, my magician with me, okay. and uh, maybe another comedian. Okay. But if they want a longer time, I'll bring a whole team. Uh, What's a good comedians. time frame for it for the church? Uh, show? About sixty minutes. Okay, oh, that's, that's a good. That's a long time. An hour yeah. is pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, at the most, it's an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. Any more than that, it's just yeah. The old yeah. people start falling asleep. Yeah, and it's just it's just not necessary. I think we've been programmed from watching movies. Done. They're about an hour and a half. Yeah. So, uh, but that, yeah, that, but that's all the commercials too. So about an hour is about about mm -hmm. right. And and with that too, is that more for adults, more for kids, a church show, or is that more for everybody? Because it's, it's clean. clean comedy. It's clean comedy. Yeah. The kids, you might think the kids, how can they relate to these yeah. stories? They are cracking up. And I think the kids laugh the most when we do act outs. Got it, got you it. Know, got when it, you okay. say a joke and then you start doing your dad's voice or you start yeah, like, oh, you know no. you know, the kids are laughing <laughs> harder than the adults. That's so awesome. they all get it. That's you know? Awesome. Yeah. That's great. So that's the churches, uh we're in hospitals now. We're we're actually um we're waiting on a grant. From uh, Dignity Health, okay, okay. they're getting a grant for uh, myself and my magician to go around to the cancer patients. Wow! Oh. Yeah, I've done a, a couple cancer wards. Uh, I've done executives in uh, hospitals to just get them to be stress free and play and have a good time. Well, going back to cancer patients too, how does a hospital look at that as being a benefit to the patient? I know, but they may not know. Well, it's all about laughter. Uh, there's all kinds of research about laughter and how it, it shifts your endorphins, it boosts your immune system, it actually lessens depression. And so, you know, with all the contraction of your face from laughing and your stomach, all that's positive 
adjustments to your inner uh, chemical. Your chemical neurological going, going you know to go mean? back again to serotonin endorphin release. You're producing that so your body has to lower the cortisol catecholamines so you're actually helping reduce pain in the body, reducing stress, and at that point getting the body to open up to see this is normal, the serotonin endorphins, and keeping this at a lower amount. And keeping that going, keeping that going. That was very well put, buddy. That's just the science behind That's excellent, yes. Every day I do this stuff, every day. And so it's being proven. Like, for example, yes. we did a, uh, a mental hospital oh, okay. in Norwalk. This is important stuff. Good. And um, I'm still blown away with this. The manager told us that based off of the, from the show that we did, that the patients were calm for five and a half days. So it almost brought their stress level down yeah. for, for five and a half days. You have a pretty good Blue show going. Yeah. That benefit alone, mm -hmm. huge testament. For and, you know, days. some of them have Tourette's and they're, you know, uh, different special needs. They're on medications the whole time, everything. But comedy, you get to go all out. And, <laughs> um, and so uh, I just remember that show so much because uh, I was watching the other performers you know and they were like yelling during their show and I got out there and I matched them oh, and no. man it, it was a complete shift Wow! and from that point I said okay I get it now this See, is how and then I only and so when I if you don't mind I no, want to no, share no, how I how I conduct the show so I work with over 200 comedians Okay. okay, and so um, I handpick certain performers to join me for certain type of events. Mm. So I don't bring, for the example, same. a young guy with his style of stories because I perform with these guys yes. and girls. If it's not going to fit a senior home, no, I'll get someone who I know is more seasoned and their stories will relate. You get a and then vice versa. Yeah. You know, if okay. it's an older guy and he's able to be funny enough for the younger group, I'll bring him. But if not, I'm going to bring the younger guy yeah. or girl. Yeah. And so I handpick people that, I, okay, oh, I see what this is. Okay, I see what kind of, you know, I've done research. Okay, I yeah. know this guy would be great. This girl would be perfect. This Asian guy would be excellent. You know, all these different yeah. uh, things is what how I kind of, you know, not just bring in whoever to be funny. Exactly. I try to have them match the uh, the venue and the uh, the event itself. That recon, that recon you're doing before the show, yes. is huge. Not only with the show itself, but who's going to perform during yes. the show. Yes, it's massive. Yes, I look at their energy. Okay, are they slow paced? Are they high energy? Okay, what do they talk about? They talk about more family, or do they talk about sports? All these different things I consider wow. as I select them to join me at a church, at a wedding reception, at a, you know, uh, for a military function. I'm a wow. Marine, yep. and yep. so it's so important for me to find, when I do military events, I have to find certain people that I know would be perfect because they've seen it all. They, and they, they can associate better with someone like attracts like. So the kid, it breaks ice right there that this is going to help them. Mm -hmm. It's huge. People understand that. Cool. Any anything else to add to their first show? <sighs> Man, what, what was that? What was that movie with uh, uh, who's the actor? I'm right now blanking. About basically his his medical school program was Robin James, Williams. Robin Williams. Yes. Yeah. What's that movie called? Patch. Patch. Patch, Patch Adams. Patch Adams. Patch yes. Adams. Yeah. It's it's you're 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 living that. You're promoting that. That happiness oh, man. through laughter. Happiness I and never health through that. laughter. Happiness and health through laughter. Huge. It's you don't you may not you may not see it day to day, but realize those kids, those mental health people, the patients, people, uh, employers, schools, everyone you're touching is taking something home to how do I now that I feel this way, how do I maintain that? It becomes addictive. It's huge. When you, when you implement that day, 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 after about three days of living that, becomes your routine. That's your new normal. So you want to maintain that state by maintaining that, that, that input to keep that endorphins going. Huge.
That's humbling, man. Huge. I never looked at it that way. You know, you're, you're living that that personality. No one's ever compared me to Patch Adams, which is an amazing story. It's huge. It's a great story for an hour and a half, but you're now you're living it the last eight years right. and built this routine with actors, DJs, schools, fire departments, uh, big businesses in the area, churches. Yeah. I'm not, I'll name everything out there. I can, mm -hmm. uh, but it's something to where it can now grow into more and more and more. Wow. You know, and that's the biggest thing is how do you make what you're doing now at a higher level by putting it online for people to see, sure. by doing more shows at different venues and having the venues bigger and bigger and bigger with the same, not same show, but for you can match your 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 show to that bigger venue. Well, the, the on the business end of this is I, uh, I have been developing systems around this. This is the key. That's, this way people are, uh, you know, as I, for example, with school assemblies, yes. everything that we do from setup to the sequence, it's, it's to on point. everything is written out in binders, you know, even our follow-up, you know, when it comes to making calls. So I have spent the last three, four years of writing out the systems and, and documenting them in such a way to where uh, we can actually either expand from here or franchise because if you think about it all the places that we've talked about whether yeah. it be schools or hospitals or churches or companies or military that's just here that's just local that's what i said the region for you what is if we went to texas huge. what if we went to london there's churches and schools and things like that and those people love to laugh too. and comedy is still the same benefit to them as it would be a californian yes you know? So I don't know what God has planned Good. with the expansion of that. I just know that it's going to happen. We are going to inspire the world with laughter. There's a system in play you put there to make one thing make your life easier, but ha it's, reputable. It's, it's repeatable sure. for other people to do yes. with the right mindset, the right heart like you have to promote that. Yes. It's massive. You know what I mean? And said, so if anyone watch the show too, contact Mel up in the show notes too how to help him promote this more, either by by uh, sponsoring an event, but also to being part of his team to get this. I'm going to push him more and more to get this online so people can see it around the world. I'll be honest with you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm... You speak different languages too? No. Cantonese, right? No, I, Cantonese. I, wish, I heard I Cantonese wish. somewhere. Maybe a poquito espanol. That's me, poquito espanol. Uh, Maybe a little bit of Japanese arigato. There you go. That's it. That's all you need. That's it. That's all you need. That's all I got. It's great because I attach <laughs> translations all the time. I see them all the time. But you're on the right. I mean, what I like about you and your show, it's you. It's just you showing up in a show and promoting that with other actors and DJs and people to make what you want to do big purpose, keep people healthy and strong and confident and good self esteem, especially with kids, so we avoid problems that. That we're reacting to in the news mm -hmm. and to our schools and that we see online so we don't have to do that absolutely it's massive just last night i was in san diego uh we did a show for uh uh inmates wow inmates are getting out in four six months and so uh it was a little more lax environment because they're kind of getting their soft skills yeah. up got it and so to go out and just kill them with laughter and inspire them and tell them that, you know, that they are valuable and that we've all made mistakes. They just got caught, you know, yeah. and, and have them <laughs> laughing. But really empowering them so that they feel like, okay, I'm going to go out. And my advice to, yes. to you, to them, to everyone is that you have to do what you love. You have to find your passion. And I know that sounds cliche, but you want to think of it this way. Whatever it is that you love. You would do it for hours and hours without ever getting tired. You would even do it for free. That particular hobby is what you do. And so I was encouraging yeah. them last night to go, okay, listen, you're still going to have to pay bills, so find a job related around that passion. This way, at least you're enjoying what you do well, and yeah. you're making money. And if you want to expand and grow from there, you're still in something that makes you happy. When you're in a job or working for a place, because you need the money, you yeah. gotta pay the bills. You've all done that before, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you've been you, there. You've lived on both sides of the coin. Exactly, yeah. and then you know you may not show up 
on time, your performance is not as great. It's just because you're not engaged. Yeah. So find something that you're passionate about. And I, you know, for years I had my family, so I couldn't go into this full time, yeah. but I always kept one toe in it. I kept reading, I kept researching, I kept performing and doing these things on the you side. You kept your art going even though it wasn't your main yes. priority or job. But then once you had that window, jumped on it. Yes. It, it's always risky. Mm -hmm. It's always a risk. But would, is it more risky to take that leap and fail or regret that you never took a chance? Oh, man. Taking the leap is where it's at. What and made you want to take the leap? Bro, I wouldn't have done yeah. it. Yeah. That's how scary it is. Yeah. I got laid off. I remember. Yeah. That's what did it. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, I guess I better just... You know, okay, God. <laughs> Thanks. I Thanks. feel like he actually yeah. said, I know you're not going to do this on your own. Here's so here push. you go. <laughs> That's real. Yeah. I, I would love to say, I took the, I the was in there. courage and I jumped off the cliff myself. No, it happened for me. That's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome to look back and go, That's why it happened that way. Yeah. Scary, uncomfortable, and successful. Absolutely. Phenomenal. I think everyone should understand that's where success comes from is when you get uncomfortable to do something outside of your, your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. That's how you grow. That's how you But succeed. when you're doing what you love, it doesn't even no, feel like right. work. No. And I probably work three, four times more than I did when I worked for someone, but it's a part of my life and it feels fun. I can go to a restaurant. And give my card to the manager and tell him what great service they had. Yeah. And if him and his wife would like to come to one of my shows. Perfect. I just created a new fan. I can go to a, a water park and say, hey, do you guys ever do anything for the summer camps to come in here? You want something around anti-bullying, anti-drugs? Let me bring my team of magician and juggler in. Like, Sorry. everywhere I go... And so I work more, well, but it's looking, fun. You're looking at how does it benefit them to make their employees, their camps, their people, their families better, not I'm looking to make some money on it. Right. Not, that's me. I, 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 I know Mel where he doesn't even check his private checkbook. Where he's not looking at what's going to happen. He right. knows just by putting the energy out there, yes. I can help them, 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 them yes. by bringing them to my show so that they make their lives better. Yes. That's really all I care that's about. All, that's that's his heart. I feel yeah. like God will take care of it, which he does. Yeah. It's he amazing. He pays the bills. Yeah. And I just focus on making his children feel better. That's, ama that's you, all I care about. And it's amazing when you look at the big picture for that. If we all live that way, it would make us, our families, our community, and our world a lot better. I agree. I think. But what am I just a little, little chiropractor in Upland? Who do I know? Hey, man. You're <laughs> as big as, as everything to me, buddy. Well, that's the thing is when you look at for someone else's benefit, how do I help them? Then you're, you're giving them a gift that they may not even know about. Right. They're naive about. They just don't know. Yeah. You know, until they you touch their heart and go, this is what it's about. I've had people say, you know, that they were suicidal before they came to the show. You know, uh, one of my son's teachers uh, said that him and his wife were at each other's throats all week long. Yeah. And they were in the area for an event and they were done. And he said, hey, let's go by Mel's show. Yeah. And he said, after that show, they were laughing and talking again, where all week it was really rough for them. Mm. And those are the ones you hear about. Yeah. But that just touched my heart that laughter releases a lot for people and caused them to come together like that. It makes everything seem subtle or not as important as just being happy. Correct. All little stuff and the stuff that we go through all week long. We're humans. We're going to make yes. mistakes. Mm -hmm. My wife will tell you about a thousand did today. Today it's only nine o'clock, ten o'clock. Right. You know. But how do I? How do you focus on the big picture? How do you help each other out? Be loving. Be happy. Even beyond everything. Mm -hmm. And be grateful that we're here. Absolutely. Wow. I feel like I'm doing God's work. You are. I'm really helping His children because you figure people have a lot to deal with at home. They're dealing with relationship issues, health issues, financial, career. Uh, deaths in the family. 
anything. Just and to have their attention for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour and a half to just laugh and shift their, their body chemistry, that's a blessing. Just to de-stress them. So all that, all those voices in your head saying things are wrong, things are wrong, things are wrong. You don't have you time. Shut that yeah. down. You can't when you're like I said when you're jumping them from here, 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 here. They can't focus on everything else. They have to focus on the moment. Right. So at that point they can go. This is what it's about. Mm -hmm. You see the benefit. And then they hear it in the stories and laughing. They can relate. You know, a lot of comedy is us talking about our own frustrations. And so people also feel like, oh. I feel the same way. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah our daughter did the same thing. It's not, so you it's don't not feel, isolated. Yes. Yeah. You're, it's a like attract like again to where you can actually go, they have the same problems I do. Right. We're all the same humans. Yeah, I got teased because I was short. I yeah. got teased because I was fat. Yeah. I got teased because I was tall. There's all these different stories that comedians get to tell. Yes. And people get to relate to those stories, and, and and knowing that it's okay to do that, right? It's okay to do that. You're you're like everybody else. Mm -hmm. It's amazing that as adults now, we can look back and go, "That was so trivial in elementary school, right?" Or junior high or high school, but realize that's all they know. Mm -hmm. That's their world. Their world revolves around their friends. What little stuff as parents we tell them, mm -hmm. and that's it. They're very again naive because they don't they haven't grown up yet. Right. So how do they how do they work with their environment to one thing adapt to it, but also get through without being when you were suicidal, but stressed out enough mm -hmm. to lash out on someone else or themselves? Right. You're making Absolutely. that normal for them, and it's okay mm -hmm. to feel that way. It's okay to talk to someone who may feel that way. Sure. To to reach out to somebody. Right. And again, it's cool to reach out and say, hey, man, you okay? Yeah. Where before, it may have been, oh, man, I don't know. That I don't, kid I don't doesn't fit in, so yeah. I'm gonna, we're going to keep him over there because he's not part of this right. crowd, this crew. Yeah. So by making that a ability to the normality of reaching out versus the abnormality, mm -hmm. you're allowing that to become, hey, why wouldn't we do that? Exactly. That's part of our, he's in our grade, why wouldn't we shop? Yeah, and you know, we don't, we don't, we want to. We want to align ourselves with millennials. Yes. Not alienate and say how, you know, because we're the ones that raised them, right? Yeah. So why not give them the tools and support them on how to uh, to make a difference as well? Well, it's like the Carl and Steve example earlier is how do you make that connection? Hey, I can benefit from you as you can benefit from me. Yes. You realize as, as I'm 44, our grandparents had the same problems with our parents. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's just a different perception of when you tag someone or a certain millennial, whatever it is, they have a thing. Right. It's just been, it's stereotypical per se, but it happens every time. Mm -hmm. But how do we break that chain by connecting now versus waiting for something else to happen? Right. And keep spreading that that defect per se and perceiving someone as not being defective this. Because kids can go all day long, well, yeah, I may not know thing you know, but you can't even turn on the computer. You don't even have to reset your iPhone. Right. What's wrong with you, old person? Right. 44. You right. Know? So how do you change that to let's connect, let's work together mm -hmm. to make us, our friends, and our family a better place? Mm -hmm. I think. Absolutely. I know. But I mean, I said you're still on a mission. Mission from God. Like the old, who's the, who's the two guys with sunglasses on? See all the time? Sunglasses. Brothers, what are they called? I forget my, my son would know. He had, and John? No, no, no. The, one, the ones that had the suit on, the hat, and the Oh, the had, Blues Brothers? The blues brothers. Yes. Yeah, you're a mission from God. That's all it is. You're just another Blues Brothers. You find your, find your brother, I guess. I don't know. Wow. Uh, again, I'm just throwing stuff out there. Man, I, it just, I'm still uh, blown away with the whole Patch Adams reference. Well, you see it, though, right? I can totally see it. But you, you're it. living it, though. You're here. It's the, it's the people you're effecting that may not have medical condition, but they have a stressor in their life that's affecting their body mentally and physically. Right. We all do. But when, when we're healthy enough to understand, hey, that's subtle, I'm not gonna let that affect me, I'm gonna do this to stay healthy by communicating, connecting with my friends and family, that's how I'm gonna do this, even working out, I, I use working out, for example, to de-stress your body, at that point I know that's not gonna affect me to cause me to do different things to harm myself or somebody else. Right. That's, that's my picture. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you keep yourself healthy so you can keep 
so you can not be affected by everything around you. Right. That that's the right thing to say. I use the word effect and affect differently. I don't know. Yeah, but I get you, buddy. Yeah, that's my thing. All right. Anything else for your first show, Mel? Uh, I just want to say uh, I do need help. <laughs> we all need help. Uh, you know, it's a lot to keep track of from admin to well, you're finance, growing your business, HR, you're, you're going marketing. From self-employed to yeah. a business now yes. to help more people and make it an exponential effect on people. Absolutely. And that, like you mentioned earlier, it's about aligning with people that really do see the mission. If they're on board, uh, the rest is amazing. Um, so, what do you need help with typically? So, like when I put it on LinkedIn, especially, I would say right now marketing for sure. Okay. Uh, I understand it, but I don't have the time to do it. And I would create a a, a system. Perfect. Okay. That would make it really easy for them to just pretty much copy, paste, and post. Copy, Done. paste, and post. Picture, you know, what we're talking about, what we're promoting, uh, and being able to just get that out on social media on a regular basis. And that way, um, that audience is being aware of the services that are available. I want everyone to feel good. And... Wherever their attention is, that's where we should be. So that when they, my whole thing is this. Yeah. The time is when the right time is. Yes. And when you think that you want to have a good time and you want to laugh, you want to feel good, I want you to think of us. Good. Then that yeah. way. You go to that channel. You go yeah, to that. It might not be today. Yeah. It might not be next year. It might yeah. be, you know, five years from now. The main thing is that when you want to laugh, I want you to think of us because I'm going to make sure that you get value. And I think by by using this video and, and looking at clips from that video, from this video too, and audio too, and going to your post shows to your previous shows, you can take that from an editing perspective and go, here's a clip for this. So you can put it everywhere, right? And it's videos people love to watch little videos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I even agree. even the podcast we talked about, you had your show before too, mm -hmm. the the audio portion too. Yes. And having someone to help you with that to build that online present uh, present presentation or on, online brand mm -hmm. allows them to know that hey, if you want clean comedy, if you want to grow your business, you want your employees to be able to work with each other. Students have problems here. My, my student behavior issues are an issue. Bring Mel in. Bring his company in. Have him do his magic, and I say magic because it's some people don't understand how it works yet, to get that idea of what normal should be at a higher value state. Absolutely. I think. So when you see this video, people, make sure you contact Mel. One thing's for his show, so put it, I'll put his link so for his website already on there, his Instagram and Facebook too. Find his next show, but also more importantly, help him help more people. You know, because again, he's a mission from God. Thank you. All right? Appreciate you. No, this is it. This is what the show is about. Thank you. Spread man. the word out more to more people on my Facebook, my, my your Facebook, sure. our Instagram, our our multiple grams and face grams, whatever it's called. <laughs> I don't know anymore.